morning. I'm doing this presentation um, with Natalia Butica from the Unity of Archaeology of Mio in Portugal. She's the engineer that's developing the GIS analysis, also with Manuela Martins and uh, Rebecca Bancrotea from the University of Santiago de Compostela in Spain. They unfortunately couldn't be here, so if you have any specific questions, I'll forward you their email. So, I'm presenting a primarily approach uh, to a macrospatial analysis in Iron Age and Roman landscape concerning uh, the specific hill fort of Citania Sanfins that's located in the north of Portugal. And uh, with this study, we intended to understand the role of the hill fort of Citania Sanfins uh, within the surrounding territory and its relationship with um, other hill forts in, uh, the, in proximity. So, the, our study area is integrated in the district of Porto, in the north of Portugal, and um, this is the, the, our limited studied area. We use the um, river Av in the north, in the south the, the river Lessa, in the coast, the coastline, and here we have the mountainous range where Sitanets and Finnish is um, implanted. So, to tell you a little bit about the hill fort of St. Finch, uh, it's the starting point of uh, our work, and there's a, a theory developed from, um, by archaeologists, Portuguese archaeologists, since the 80s, 90s, that this hill fort had a central place within the territory, acting as a social, political, and economical center. Um, also, that with the Roman campaign of Decimo Junio Bruto, between 138 and 136 uh, BC, the smaller hill forts around uh, Sofinj merged into it. S uh, so, taking account this and uh, also um, the, the previous research work carried by Herman Silva, um, also in the 90s, this hill fort has a long term occupation which dates between the 5th and the 3rd centuries BC and it was abandoned around the 4th century AC. It has uh, 15 hectares of extension, and you can see it has these two main axes of circulation, four lines of wall, uh, um, a bath area here in the fourth line of wall, and uh, there's also traces of medieval and Christian occupation here in the Acropolis area with a potential chapel from the 12th century dedicated to San Romão and also um, an Acropolis. We, within this area, we also have um, more hill forts that have long-term occupation and a rev, rev, relevant uh, role um, in this area, like hill fort of uh, Monte Padrão, that's located approxi approximately six kilometers from the hill fort of São Finch, and from here you have visibility to, to São Finch. Um, this hill fort um, has also several phases, starting in the 9th century BC to the 3rd century AC and also between the 10th and the 13th century uh, AC. There's a small chapel built on top of the hill fort and it has an extensive necropolis. Here we have the hill fort of Alvarenus that uh, it's non-occupation also from late Bronze Age uh, and it's considered an important um, site because of not only its urbanistic remodeling occurred in the first century AC, probably due to local flourishment, but also because it's, can, it's very close to um, a Roman road connected Porto to Bracara Bra Augusta that passed really close by. So, because of this context, some authors consider that Alvarelius became a secondary agglomeration settlement. The next uh, hill fort. Uh, it's Gifões, it's over here. It controls the basin of the river Lessa, one of our natural barriers that we defined uh, for the study area. And it's na uh, navigable until here, the bottom of the, the, the hill fort. Um, it was occupied during Iron Age, Roman period, and also medieval times. And some authors consider that this hill fort had a distribution role at a um, a regional scale, transporting goods uh, from the, to the hill, hill forts alongside the river Lessa 
for instance, the, the Hilfort of Monte Padrão, as, as I've shown you, and ending up at the Hilfort of Citania de São Fins. Here you have the closer view of the Hilfort here, near the, the river. So, here in this map, we have the distribution of the Iron Age sites that are uh, in our study area. You have Citanit São Fins, Monte Padrão, Castro de Alvorelhos, here in the, the basin of the river, um, Castro de Fons, and we also emphasize this hill fort that is also in the basin of the river uh, Av. And um, it also may have been controlling the basin, but it's still not excavated. So in this map, we have a total of 17 um, Iron Age hill forts, and they are uh, distinguished uh, here by cultural period. Um, the red ones have longest occupation, the purple one Iron Age and Roman, and the blue one only had um, Iron Age occupation. There are a few of them. So, in terms of methodology, we started by defining uh, which uh, scale of analysis we wanted uh, to approach. Then we structured our database that is called to Archis and stored the data collected as bibliography, cartography, photography. And then we had the basis to do to articulate the database uh, with ArcGIS and do uh, geospatial analysis, mobility, visibility, this cost path, and not path and also bibliometric analysis. So, in terms of scale, we focused in this first phase uh, on a macro-level approach concerning the relationships between archaeological sites and the territory. Uh, we tried to focusing on aspects as implantation of sites, trying to observe uh, the settlement uh, pattern and any visible relationship with natural resources as rivers, pathways and good aptitude soils. In terms of the structure of the database, um, this is developed by the Unity of Archaeology of the University of Mino. And um, uh, the, the architecture of this information system is modul modular and allows the registration not only of the archaeological excavation process, but also uh, links the, with context namely uh, territory, sites, whatever type of information you want to add, you can uh, connect. And then this, this is um, the back office with the example of the information related to Citania uh, Tsofinj that we use to standardize all the, um, the collected and stored information. This uh, application is designed to work in a browser and it's uh, available all, uh, all in uh, back office and also in uh, the field. So here you have like bibliography, interventions, materials, cultural period, all sorts, uh, even hydrography, uh, geological context. You can add, add all sorts of information you want and later on link it. So, Moving on to geospatial analysis, we did like um, a first uh, map uh, with anisotropic lines and it was um, instant that uh, you can see that with the topography of the terrain, um, there's two different sets of spatial organization between the sites. One in a mountainous interior area and one in the coastal line. So, we decided to apply the same set of analysis, but we did a least cost path here in the mountainous area between the hill forts of Citanes and Finch and Monte Padrão. We wanted to better understand their relationship. So, here you have the examples of sets of analysis we applied to the mountainous area, starting with um, the digital elevation model to verify and compare the hill fort's altitude and uh, we can see here that the higher uh, hill fort is uh, Citania de Finch also 
we did an essay on soil aptitude uh, distribution, but due to the lack of the information of the map, we just could observe that there's a heterogeneous dispersion of sites between areas with high, mod high to moderate and marginal aptitude. Then, we did an, an isotropic um, line uh, analysis uh, considering the topography of the terrain and we were able to determine the time necessary to move from one hill to another and to the resources. We applied this, cr this criteria in general to um, all hill forts but we did it specific specifically to Monte Padrão and Citanet Saint Finch to better understand their individual dynamics. Um, and in the case of Citanet Saint Finch, we find that it takes between 45 minutes to one hour and a half to reach uh, all the surrounding uh, settlements. Also, here we have a least cost path analysis between Citanet Saint Finch and Monte Padrão with a visibility analysis of two kilometer range. And you can see here that, not here, but uh, in a closer view, the, the, starting, the starting point we defined it to the least cost path in Citanet Saint Finch was the third line of wall of the hill fort. And in Monte Padrão, the arrival point was the top of the hill fort. And the least cost path part, um, starts exactly from one of the main entrances of the hill forts of Citanet Saint Finch and um, also crosses, this is a Roman road, crosses the Roman road in three um, specific uh, parts, in, in which one of them is a crossway from, for the river. Uh, so, and also the with the visibility, we can see that both of these sites um, domain parts of the of the not only the Roman pathway but the the least cost path and um, then we crossed because of the lack of inform the information we had we tried to cross the um, the soil aptitude map with uh, an isotropic line and visibility at two kilometer range. And we can uh, see that most of the sites have within 15 minutes uh, visibility to uh, water resources and uh, good aptitude soils. So to combine this, uh, we did bibliometric uh, data analysis. Um, we did an exhaustive collection of bibliography and archaeological data that's available in the Portuguese portal of archaeology and with it stored in our database we were able to uh, map it and al analyze in a quantitative and qualitative distribution of the available data. So uh, as this map highlights there's a discrepan discrepancy between the studies of different sites and different types of studies. We also note that there's a few studies on material cu culture partially because of the absence of archaeological exc excavation. So here we decided uh, to see how many material studies are, specific site studies and generic um, um, occupation uh, in iron age studies. So you see that Hillfort of St. Finch is mainly the mostly uh, studied and referenced and between this territory you see there's a lot of lack of uh, material studies and specific studies of the sites. We also produced um, other maps about uh, how many of these sites were excavated, what's the state of preservation and so on. So. With this uh, type of uh, analysis allowed us to reinforce the pre-existing pre knowledge about these hill forts, specifically, specifically Citania de Finch, and also the importance of these long-term occupation sites. We have also identified two main patterns of um, settlement um, differentiated between the coastal zone and the mountainous uh, area. This first group um, is characterized by a semicircle um, position orientated to the sea 
and the, there's a communication pathway, pathway north and uh, south through here. And the second group is defined by the implantation in high ground areas, possibly articulated with defensive needs and territorial domain. Uh, by, uh, but we need to articulate more data at an end, a multi-scalar approach in order to advance in the understanding of these relationships established through time um, by this field force within the territory. So, uh, final considerations. We think that good data supports high quality research and verifiable interpretations. Therefore, um, the need to build a good information system with variable data that can be uh, accessible and traceable. Also, landscape studies and geospatial analysis have to be combined with different uh, levels of knowledge, but also contrasted with other archaeological data <coughs> obtained with more conventional tools. Uh, like the uh, archaeological survey, excavations, and so on, so that we can refine their characterization and chronology. And uh, at last, the articulation between these two types of data, geospatial and bibliometric, allows us to strategize future research work, uh, which allows us to deepen our knowledge of this area at a macro level and feedback the information systems with good high quality. So thank you for your attention.